All right, <clears throat> this is concept three notes on meiosis, and these are actually the same for CP and honor students. So regardless of what class you're in, these notes work for you. So our bodies have two types of cells in them. Sorry if you just heard my dog groaning in the background. So they have two types of cells in them. You have somatic cells, which is another word for body cells, and these cells are diploid which means 2N, which means they have two sets of chromosomes in them, the set that came from your mom and the set from your dad. Diploid is just complete. That's all of your DNA is those two sets. Examples of somatic cells are like blood cells, lung cells, muscle cells, heart cells, etc. The other type of cells are gametes, which are sex cells. These are haploid. They only have half the amount of DNA. So they have one set of chromosomes, and this is egg in females and sperm in males. And meiosis is the process of creating sex cells. We've already learned about mitosis, which is how the body makes body cells, but today we're going to learn how to make sex cells. <clears throat> so within your cells, both somatic and gametes, there are two types of chromosomes. There are autosomes, which carry the traits that just make you who you are. This is the first 44 chromosomes in humans. And there's also sex chromosomes. These carry the traits that make you who you are and also just specifically determine your gender. These are the last two chromosomes. They're either X or Ys. So this right here is a karyotype. It's just a diagram that shows the number and appearance of chromosomes um, in a cell. This is showing a human body cell. So it's a human body cell or human somatic cell, and it's diploid, meaning it has all of your DNA in it. So it has 46 total chromosomes, and 23 of these came from your mom and 23 came from your dad. So we organize them in pairs. So in each of these pairs, one of these came from mom and a similar one came from dad. These first 22 pairs or 44 chromosomes are autosomes, okay? Me and my brother could have identical autosomes, okay? But this last pair right here, it's always the bottom right one, are your sex chromosomes. If they're two X's, then you are a girl. If they're an X and a Y, you're a boy. Now, I know these aren't labeled, but you can see that these look really similar. So these would be two X's, so this would be the karyotype for a girl. So again, we're looking at a somatic cell here with all of the chromosomes, so a diploid cell. If this was a karyotype of a sex cell, like an egg or sperm, we'd only see one from each of these pairs. So there'd be 22 autosomes and only one sex chromosome. All right, homologous chromosomes. These are the chromosome pairs that have the same types of genes. So each one of these is a homologous chromosome pair. You get one from mom and one from dad. You have 23 homologous chromosome pairs. Okay, they have the same genes on them, but they may say something different. So both of these chromosomes may have a gene for hair color, but dads may say brown hair and moms may say blonde hair. Okay, but they're similar. That's why we say they're homologous. This is different from sister chromatids, which we talked about mitosis. Sister chromatids are two identical copies of the same chromosome. So... When a chromosome is just looking like this, it's just by itself, that's an individual chromosome. When it's an X, it's a sister chromatid. It's been duplicated during the S phase of interphase. Okay, this is showing unduplicated chromosomes, but they are paired up. And understanding the difference between these is critical for what we're going to be learning about um, in meiosis. So remember, this is just kind of our structure DNA. It's all coiled up into chromosomes. This is showing sister chromatids. This is showing duplicated chromosomes here in the cell, in the nucleus of the cell. Okay, now all of this is this preface is so important because meiosis is sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, the number of cells and the number of chromosomes is so important. Okay, so diploid cells. These are the cells, we've mentioned diploid in a, a few slides ago, that have two full sets of chromosomes. We abbreviate that as 2N. You have a set from mom and a set from dad. All human somatic cells are diploid. Um, so, And that diploid number for humans is 46. Haploid cells only have one set of chromosomes, and we represent that as N. There's only one set, and it's a combination of chromosomes from mom and dad. 
And these are your gametes, your egg or sperm. And in humans, N equals 23. Now, why is this? Well, in meiosis, we're going to start with diploid cells, with a diploid germ cell. It's going to have duplicated chromosomes in it after S phase of interphase. Then we're going to split up those homologous chromosome pairs, and we're going to have two haploid cells, but they're still going to be duplicated. They're still going to be the X's, the sister chromatids. Then we're going to do meiosis 2. We're going to do PMAT again, and we're going to split again so that the sister chromatids get split, and I end up with four haploid cells with unduplicated chromosomes. Why do I want them unduplicated? Well, that's because organisms that sexually reproduce like humans will fuse the genetic information in the gametes from two parents in order to create an offspring that is a mixture of both parents. So fertilization is when we're going to take one egg with 23 chromosomes with one set of DNA and one sperm with 23 chromosomes with one set of DNA. And we're going to fuse them together to make a zygote. And this zygote is going to be the first time that you have two sets of DNA, that you have all 46 chromosomes that you need to be you. Then that zygote will go on and do what we learned about mitosis, where it will do mitosis and make identical copies of itself. And then those cells will differentiate into the different types of cells, and you'll grow into being a fetus. Okay, but this is, we're doing this first part. We're learning how does that egg and sperm get formed. And it's so important that if they don't, if they have the half amount of chromosomes, so that two halves will make the whole set that we need. This is showing a bunch of sperm swimming towards an egg, which is, I know, kind of creepy. All right, so the purpose of meiosis is to create gametes, which are sex cells that have half the normal number of chromosomes. The normal number is two sets. So in meiosis, we're creating cells that have one set. Again, we call these haploid because they only have one of each type of homologous chromosome. They're only used for sexual reproduction. And so again, sperm in males, egg in females. Each parent's only going to pass on half of their chromosomes, one from each of their pairs, so their offspring will end up with a full set of 46. So I myself have 46 chromosomes in my somatic cells, 23 from my mom, Robin, and my dad, Dan. But in the eggs in my body, in my sex cells, I only have 23 chromosomes in those. And it's a random combination of chromosomes from my mom, Robin, and my dad, Dan. When my husband and I one day have a baby, my, one of my eggs with 23 chromosomes and one of his sperm with 23 chromosomes will fuse to make one zygote with 46. So we're learning the process of making that egg and sperm, so the first part of this. Now, meiosis is very similar to mitosis, but it's slightly different in that we're going to go through PMAT twice in meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. So first, overall goal of meiosis 1 is we're going to separate those homologous chromosome pairs. So we're going to separate the chromosomes from mom and dad. We're also going to reduce from diploid duplicated chromosomes to haploid duplicated chromosomes. Then in meiosis 2, we're going to separate the X's. We're going to separate the sister chromatids. And the duplicate, duplicated haploid daughter cells from meiosis 1 are going to divide into individual chromosomes. Now, before meiosis 1, we're going to do interphase, just like mitosis. So remember, my interphase has three parts. G1, which is when the cell grows and makes proteins. The S phase, which is when chromosomes replicate. This is the most important part. This is DNA replication. All right, we're going to do DNA replication. We're going to make the sister chromatid. So they're going to go and look like X's after this part. We're going to have two copies of every chromosome. And then we'll do G2, which is when the cell is going to grow and make more proteins. At the end of interphase, the cell has two full sets of duplicated chromosomes. So the chromosomes look like X's. All right, and we're going to go through prophase 1, where the nuclear membrane breaks down. The centrioles will start separating, and we're going to start making spindle fibers. Homologous chromosomes will pair up. So notice the similar chromosomes go next to each other. They're going to form a tetrad, so a cluster of chromatids. And crossing over can occur between those homologous chromosomes, which is new. This didn't happen in prophase of, metaphase, of mitosis. All right, notice now this, there would actually be 46 chromosomes in a human's version of this, 23 pairs, but that would be a really complicated diagram. So we're just going to for, show four chromosomes or two homologous chromosome pairs. All right, crossing over. 
During prophase 1, because the homologous chromosomes are all lined up and paired together, sometimes they can kind of get crossed over and get tangled. And when this happens, they can swap pieces of DNA. And this creates new combinations of genes in the chromosomes that are part mom and part dad. So this is one way we get genetic variation. All right. After prophase 1 is metaphase 1. So the homologous chromosome pairs are going to line up in the middle in pairs. So notice they're lined up in pairs. In anaphase 1, we're going to split those pairs. So the homologous chromosomes are going to separate. The sister chromatids stay intact, but the homochromos separate. So this chromosome that has its similar chromosome from dad, so mom and dad separate and will never be together again. In telophase 1 in cytokinesis, chromosomes gathered either in the cell at the poles, the nuclear membranes may reform, and the cytoplasm is going to divide in cytokinesis and the spindle fibers dissolve. The end result is two haploid daughter cells. Notice it's haploid because we're ending up with only two chromosomes in each. We started with four, and two is half the original number. But we still have duplicated chromosomes. We still have two copies of each chromosome. So we have to do PMAT again. So prophase two, spindle fibers form. They'll start attaching to the centromeres of the sister chromatids. Nuclear membranes break down. Notice this is happening in two cells at once. Metaphase two, the sister chromatids line up single file because there's no longer pairs. So they'll line up single file. Anaphase two, the sister chromatids get separated. One chromatid from each of the pairs goes to each side of the cell. And then in telophase 2 in cytokinesis, the nuclear membranes form around the sets of chromosomes, spindle fibers dissolve, and the cytoplasm divides. The end result is four completely genetically unique haploid daughter cells. Because again, we started with four. That was my diploid number. I'm ending with two, which is half the original number, each containing one set of chromosomes. Now, interestingly enough, in males, this process is happening from puberty on. So from puberty on, germ cells in male um, sexual organs will split into four and create and do meiosis and become four sperm cells for every one germ cell. Then those will mature into sperm that can go on and fertilize. In females, though, all of the eggs that females will ever have um, will be formed in the womb. So, females are born with all the eggs that they'll ever have, and then once they hit maturity, those eggs mature and one gets released a month at a time. But you do have a limited number of eggs. What also is interesting in females, is even though it splits into four, they don't split evenly. And so one will be way bigger than the other three. So the other three end up just kind of dissolving and deteriorating, and you only get one egg from each original germ cell, which is kind of crazy. So eggs are a lot more valuable and harder to come by than sperm. All right, so I think it's really important that we compare these processes um, before moving on any further. So we're going to go through the who, what, when, where, why, and how of each of these processes. So mitosis. What? We're creating diploid somatic cells. When? It's happening all throughout your life, from the womb, from when you're first a zygote, all the way until you die. Where? It's just happening throughout your body, in every part of your body. Why? So that you can grow and so that you can repair. How? It's going to go through PMAT one time. The result is two identical diploid somatic cells. And so this is asexual reproduction because you do this all by yourself. You don't need any help. And we're making identical copies. Meiosis, though. The what is we're creating haploid sex cells. When? Females before you're born. Males throughout your life. Where? It's going to be in your ovaries and testes. Ovaries and girls. Those are your sexual organs. Testes and boys. Why? So that we can eventually make babies. The immediate why is to make cells with half the number of chromosomes, but the ultimate why is so that those can fuse to make a baby with the right number of chromosomes. How? We're going to do PMAT twice, resulting in four unique haploid gametes, and this is a sexual process because to get the end result of a baby, even though you can make egg by yourself, you can make sperm by yourself, to get the baby, you need two partners to do that for the egg and sperm to fuse and make a zygote. All right, and that is meiosis.